Hi, viewers. Welcome back to Sahara TV. At this time, we'd like to talk about a clash between Nigerians and Indians in India that happened last week and is actually still going on. Uh, last week, a Nigerian man, about 35 years old, was stabbed to death in Goa in India. And because the Indian policemen did not do the investigations uh, about his death, some Nigerians got out together to protest. They had the cops of the guy on the street and they protested, demanding that an investigation be done about why the guy was murdered. Now, um, to talk with me about this issue is Mr. Tejas Mehta. He is the anchor and bureau chief of NDTV from Mumbai. Mr. Uh, Tejas, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you so much, Abiola. Wonderful. Okay, so just for the sake of our viewers who may not be familiar with what happened in India and why we are talking about this, we're just going to play a short clip of what happened. Uh, it's a report by IBN Live. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Angry Nigerian nationals protesting on the National Highway 17 in Goa last week. The agitated mob refused to move the body of a fellow Nigerian murdered last month. These scenes have now sparked off a diplomatic row between India and Nigeria. We are being given the impression that the murder of this person is unimportant to you, that your own interest is the interest of your own people and not the interest of Nigerians, some of them who have faced some persecution in this country. The Ministry of External Affairs has got in touch with the Chief Secretary of Goa, and we have been assured that uh, investigation is underway. Goa police has arrested one of the eight suspects they believe murdered the Nigerian national. They believe a narcotics-related turf war between rival gangs in the north coastal Goa led to the murder. With the motives still unclear, the hunt is on for the other suspects. The arrest came. All right, viewers, so that's just a short clip of what happened in India and why there has been a clash between Indians and Nigerians. So, uh, Mr. Jeta, uh, Mr. I mean, Tejas, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to listen to that video that we just played, but uh, I know that you've been to Goa to report about this incident, and I'm wondering what's the atmosphere right now in Goa. Is it still very tense? Well, not really. I mean, uh... Uh, what really has happened in the past couple of days uh, since the clashes took place and the arrest of 52 Nigerians uh, happened. After that, most Nigerians have either gone underground in Goa or they have left Goa itself and gone to, uh, say, uh, Mumbai or, uh, or the city of Pune. Uh, but the, what the problem remains is that uh, there is certainly uh, among the Nigerian community a sense of fear a sense of, uh, you know, uh, not knowing what to do at this point of time. But it is also true that uh, the, the, the Goa police actually, uh, when, the, when the murder of a Nigerian national took place, it did not take immediate action. But uh, to be fair to them, uh, at the same time, uh, within 24 hours, it's difficult to nab who the accused really are. Now, what I have been told by my sources is that in uh, somewhere uh, around... Uh, you know, about uh, 50 kilometers uh, from where the murder took place, there was a fight between uh, uh, Nigerians and uh, some local Goans. And uh, what we are not sure about is what was the reason behind the fight, but two Nigerians had been arrested. And after that, the local Goans were angry. One particular local Goan, not, not, not too many actually, and he had his own gang. And uh, they went about, uh, you know, attacking... Uh, certain Nigerians uh, here and there. And unfortunately, what happened was that this particular Nigerian who, who lost his life was not uh, probably involved uh, with the drug trade as, uh, as we are being told. But the government of Goa and the police uh, consistently uh, are saying that he was really involved with the drug trade. Uh, that's what they believe, that uh, the, this, is an out, this is an outcome uh, of, of drug wars because the Nigerians... Uh, it is a fact that the Nigerian community here in Goa and in large parts of India is involved in, in the drug uh, in the drug trade and, and drug peddling. There is no doubt about that. But whether this particular Nigerian who lost his life who was murdered, whether he was involved, at this point of time, the Goa police has no clarity. In any case, he was murdered, and since there was no immediate action against them, uh, the Nigerian community went out on the road, and they very extremely violently actually uh, protested. In fact, what they did was they blocked the national highway uh, in, a, in a place called Porvorim, 
and uh, they also uh, when the when the body of the accused of the of the of the of the, of the colleague was being uh, taken for post mortem by the police they brought it out from uh, the the police van and they they put it on the road itself on the highway and they blocked it for about one and a half hours and that's what really angered the local population that how is it possible that a foreign community which is living in india as tourists can can go out in the open and protest in this way in any case the police also uh, was equally responsible for not being able to calm down the entire situation for being able to take control of the entire situation they should have used tear gas to disperse the crowd but they could not do that at the same time the nigerian community according to the goa police and the government here they say that they uh, completely misbehaved uh, they went about uh, breaking the uh, you know uh, destroying public property the years man which was right there attacking policemen blocking the national highway and therefore 50 to nigerians have been arrested and they have been booked for attempts to murder for for uh, trying to uh, uh, for disrupting uh, uh, public property and also stopping uh, public servants from working because they also had attacked uh, the policemen so that um, was, that was the reason why the entire riots really mm-hmm. triggered in, in in the city of porvorim and of course after okay. that uh, it became a diplomatic row between india and nigeria thank you very much to yes for all these explanations you actually covered a lot of things that i would still be asking so i guess i can just get right on it and ask some questions based on some statements that you have made um i've been watching the news a lot indian tv indian media houses and i've been reading a lot online i'm surprised that you're saying that the guy's death may not be drug related because according to indian media all the indian media that have done stories about this that i've seen they've been saying that speculations are that this is probably drug related is there any reason why the indian media has been fueling the idea that uh the it could be drug related and making it look like all nigerians in india are doing drugs because i'm surprised that you are saying that investigation is showing that this may actually not be drug related i don't know if you listen the video that we just played they said they said in there too that this is probably a clash between two drug gangs so why is the media in yeah. india fueling the idea that it, it it has to be into drugs well don't blame the media let me clarify myself if i have not been clear enough what really is the the real reason behind uh the 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 clashes between the nigerian and a and a local gang the government says is a gang war it is related to drugs but this person who has been killed is he related to drugs or not chief minister manohar parikar says as of now that is not really very clear whether the person who has been killed is directly related to drugs also i also spoke to the to the advocate who is representing uh uh these uh fifty to nigeria about 20 or 50 to nigerians and he also represents many of the nigerians who are involved in various cases uh, in the state of goa itself and uh what i have learned off record from uh, other people is that this is exactly as i explained how uh, the reasons were there was a fight between uh, one particular individual and some nigerians we don't know why that fight happened perhaps it happened because of the drug drug war between uh, nigerians uh, here in goa some nigerians here in goa and uh, the, the local uh, local uh, drug uh, drug uh, gangs itself but what we are being told uh, is that the person who got killed he perhaps was not involved with drugs but the larger issue okay, as you are so, pointing out yeah. regarding racism itself yes that is that is a concern because uh naturally the entire nigerian community is not involved with drugs or are criminals but uh, the rec- records at least show that many of them are, have are in india they don't have valid documents the among the 52 have been arrested only one had a original passport according to the government of goa and the rest 37 of them didn't have any document whatsoever so uh, it, it is very strange because uh, i'm sure if you go abroad anywhere you will carry your you know legal documents passport visa on you almost all the time so all why right, um, these, i'm uh, sorry to i'm sorry to interrupt you again but you also made a statement that the the protest was violent and that they attacked policemen i've seen the video of the protest i watched the whole thing from the moment that they stopped the bus i don't see any i didn't see any nigerian attacking a policeman in that video is there any evidence that we can get that nigerians actually attacked the police 
policemen because it's on that basis that they arrested about 50 of them. Is there any evidence like photos or any hidden pic, um, video that we are yet to see where a Nigerian is actually attacking a, an Indian policeman? Uh, because I watched that video and I did not see anything violent. Uh, the fact that they blocked the road, I'm not speaking for them, but I guess it's their way of making it known that this is why they are protesting and getting the attention of everybody. So can you say exactly what was violent in that protest and the evidence that Nigerians in India, those guys, that they actually attacked a, an Indian policeman? Not only one policeman. According to eyewitnesses, and there were, there were plenty of eyewitnesses there, the, the, the Nigerian, Nigerian community, which was which was protesting on the roads, they did attack policemen, and there are plenty of eyewitnesses. That's you the said they beat up a have. policeman? It, yes, I say policemen. It may not, may not have been caught on camera. Everything is not on, caught on camera. That is for certain. Also, at the same time, there is there are videos which show that the local population attacked one Nigerian itself. So there is enough proof on both counts that the, lo the local population on one side attacked one Nigerian, and they, or, or, I, I think a couple of them, or two of them at least, they, they've been hospitalized also with, with injuries. At the same time, the Nigerian community also did get extremely violent. There, are, there is no dispute about that. The, the real dispute really here is whether or not uh, what was the reason behind this uh, entire episode of murder, why did uh, it go out of control, these are the real issues here. And, of course, the issue of, of drugs in uh, in Goa itself, because for the past, uh, not just uh, 10, 20 years, about 30 years, uh, the issue of drugs in Goa has been a, a major, major concern. Now, they are not just one, there's not just one gang of Nigerians who really are operating here. The Russians are operating here. Even the Israelis at one point of, were, were operating here. The questions about racism also come in here, because you had a minister uh, in here in Goa, uh, giving a very derogatory and uh, racist comment, saying that uh, Nigerians are like cancer. He was generalizing the entire community, and uh, he was the one I interviewed him a few days ago, uh, and he apologized. Yeah, uh, on I, NBC watched that that, I watched that yeah, interview. I so watched that interview. You said actually, I you, you led times to my next it. question already. I, I wanted to talk about racism issue. Um, I, I, I watched that interview and, and I heard that the minister called Nigerians a cancer. But um, just to look at the broad picture, I'm wondering uh, if India is concerned at all about the kind of image that they are portraying when it comes to racism, especially against Africans. And this is not just about this isolated case and about the Nigerians. I remember that last year there was a huge Indian wedding in South Africa where, you, I don't know if you heard about it, the Gupta family, uh, they landed at a military base because they didn't want to go through the normal check, checking uh, in South Africa. In yes. South Africa and, uh, actually, one of the family members of the, the, the Gupta actually said that, well, they are providing a lot of job opportunities for South Africans. So because of that, um, I guess he's trying to say they should be able to do whatever they want because they are providing jobs for South Africans. And also, um, a lot of Kenyans have, have complained that Indians in Kenya, that uh, they are not always nice to the Kenyan people. And I remember that uh, the president of Uganda, Idi Amin, actually deported some Indians some years ago because of the racial discrimination towards Africans. Uh, and, you know, I've just been wondering, as, uh, as a reporter, as a journalist, would you say from your, your reportings in India, do Indians have issues with black people, especially Africans? Well, you know, this whole issue about a fair skin is is prevalent across the world. It is not just India, it is prevalent across the world. When the Britishers ruled India, at that point of time, uh, you had racism against Indians. Uh, there, were, there used to be billboards and signboards outside restaurants saying, uh, no, dogs inside, no dogs allowed inside, no Indians allowed inside. Today you have, unfortunately, a couple of, uh, banners coming up in Goa, which say, uh, say no to Nigerians. I, I was going to bring that no up. To, say no yeah. to drugs. Now, I took that photograph. I, I, I saw it, and I, I was uh, quite aghast about it. But, but at the same time, I did speak to a Nigerian international football player. And I watched that interview about, as well. Of yeah, you just a couple of hours ago. Footballer. And that was, uh, you know, Ogba, 
uh, Kalu, and he told me that in his experience, he has felt that 90% of Indians are not racist, 10% surely are racist. And okay, so had, uh, a, I, I don't know though if you, I don't know if you understand my question. So I'm just asking that in general, are there, do do some Indians have issues with Africans, like you know, just people that are Africans? Do some Indians just have issues with that? You know, you you cannot generalize. The whole problem is that if you start generalizing any community in any manner, be it Indians, be it Nigerians, be it Americans, uh, be it Kenyans, be it South Africans, then you defeat the entire purpose of, 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 of a journalistic study because at the end of the day, most human beings, uh, you know, have their own issues to really handle and they don't want, they, they want to earn money, they want to, you know, feed their families, feed them themselves and live a happy life. So right. uh, I would not say that most uh, Goans especially are racist because at the end of the day, they're catering to a tourist Okay, so um, I appreciate the way you're answering the questions, but I'm wondering if Indians are worried at all about the image, their, their image uh, um, out there, the way the world is seeing them, especially Africans. Are they worried that people are considering us as racist? Well, that, that certainly uh, uh, is, it, it will be a bad repercussion because, you know, until this became a diplomatic row between Nigeria and India, uh, this entire incident was not really reported. But once the Nigerian uh, diplomat really said that uh, if you don't, if Goa doesn't stop evicting Nigerians, then, Niger then Indians in Nigeria will, will, see, will see the same repercussion of, Niger of Indians being out on the street. Now, that was a, a very, very outrageous comment because he's a diplomat. He has got to be responsible of Indian citizens in Nigeria also. And that was uh, taken with a lot of shock and awe. But yes, I do agree that uh, the image of India certainly takes a beating because uh, a, a small incident like this, it, it may be just 10% as uh, international Nigerian uh, football player Ogba Kalu says that 10% uh, of Indians may be racist. That's his experience. And largely, the experience has been positive in India. But still, at the end of the day, even one black apple can make the entire lot of apples look really bad. So... Uh, that's that's something which uh, you know or that that's something which gets magnified of course in the media but my experience largely has been in goa that yes it, it is this is, entire issue is very shameful and uh, and one feels sorry for nigerians at the same time nigerians the nigerian community there certainly is a problem at the end of the day because many of them are not with valid documents i don't see any reason if somebody is here, if somebody of a, a foreigner and you know, here I, in India, sorry to cut you, but I was going to talk about that. Is, is is there any reason why these Nigerians were not uh, deported before this incident happened? Is there any reason why they were not investigated? That oh, they don't have valid documents. Is there any reason that that is coming up now that this incident happened? No, this is not coming up now. This is known for the last many many years. There are various gangs which operate in in India, in in Goa especially. And uh, the Nigerian problem in specific is not just, uh, you know, connected with only Goa. It happens in Mumbai, it happens in Pune, it happens in Bangalore. Not just about drugs, but about financial, uh, you know, uh, swiping your credit card, you know. You get SMSs uh, from text messages from unknown numbers saying you have won a lottery. And, 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 and I get that as well. Nigeria I get that too. At the at, at end of the day. So I'm not, the whole problem really here is not about, uh, you know, uh, is not about striking or targeting the Nigerian community. The problem are manyfold. There is, the Nigerian problem is known for a very long time. Many I of see. them come from a very poor background and they want to earn some money. Many don't want to go back to Nigeria itself. Uh, and that's um, the, the problem. The po poverty is the main problem at the I end see. of the day. Uh, Mr. And therefore, Tejas, many enter the drug trade and other problems. Sorry, I'm running out of time. Sorry, but I, I just had to ask you a few questions quickly before we run out of time. I'm just wondering how much of your report at your station uh, is dedicated to... Uh, the, the Africans or the Nigerians that are doing good things in India. I, I've seen a lot of reports about Nigerians that are drug uh, drug dealers, Nigerians that are scammers. Is there any percentage of your report uh, that is targeted towards Nigerians that are doing good things in India? Because I'm sure that there are Nigerians in India that are doing good things as well. Is there a place sure where we can are. we can find this? Is there a place where we can, you know, in from Indian media where we can go and read about the good Nigerians or 
Indian um, media house? I am sure, I am certain they are doing some good things. There is no doubt about that. The point really here is, don't the, we should, no community, no country should make the mistake of castigating an entire uh, race or a people as as druggies or as drug peddlers or uh, as criminals. That should never be done. And that's exactly, uh, you know, unfortunately, is the mistake which uh, people in Goa, uh, or some people in Goa at least are making. But uh, unfortunately, I've only been in Goa at this point of time. I have been trying to look for the Nigerian community here. I did get in touch with uh, some Nigerians today, and we were about to interview them. But uh, they finally told us that the embassy in New Delhi and the Nigerian embassy has not allowed them to speak to the media. So, how so you've not done any Nigerian? story about Nigerians that are doing good things? Is that what you're saying? I need to see where the Nigerians are. They are not coming out in the open. They don't want to speak to the media at this point of time. Of course, in other parts of uh, of the country, they may be doing good parts. But currently, I am in Nigeria. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Goa. And uh, I've been looking for Nigerians. The one person I found was the international football player, Mr. Kalu. But the rest of them, uh, we have been trying to speak, speak to them. But they aren't willing to speak to the media because the embassy, the Nigerian embassy in Delhi, has forbidden them from speaking to the Indian media at this point of time because the situation Nigerian remains... Nigerian embassy sensitive. forbid... Ni okay, anyway, I guess maybe because of this incident, but I guess if you're just looking for right. a Nigerian that is doing good things to profile, I don't imagine that the embassy will tell them not to talk. Anyway, Mr. Tejas, thank you so much for joining us and having this interview. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I hope the Nigerian embassy actually allows us to interview them. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Viewers, that has been Mr. Tejas uh, from India, Tejas Mehta. He's an anchor and bureau chief of NDTV from Mumbai in India, and that has been an interview about the clash between Nigerians and Indians. We still have more to come. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.